One can use several models to mathematically describe the nucleus of an atom. Today's topic is one of those models, the so-called liquid drop model. The basic assumption is that the nucleus is held together by the nuclear force, which results from QCD's strong interaction. Just like when water is falling, it forms small drops, which are held together by intermolecular forces, we now see the nucleus as a liquid of protons and neutrons. In this video, we want to describe the binding energy of a nucleus using this liquid drop model. The binding energy describes how much energy keeps a system together. For example, if you look at this plot, you can see that the element with the largest binding energy is iron. The binding energy plays a role in calculating the total mass of a nucleus. The total mass is given by the sum of all proton masses plus all neutron masses and then minus the binding energy. Here we can see that the nucleus is usually lighter than the sum of its constituents. So how do we calculate this binding energy? To answer this, we need the help of German physicist Karl Friedrich von Weizsäcker, who came up with his semi-empirical formula in 1935. We start with the experimental observation that the binding energy per nucleon is almost constant for large nuclei. So if E over A is almost constant, then as a first careful approximation we can assume that the binding energy is proportional to A. Here A is the total amount of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, the mass number. This term is called volume term and it says that the bigger the nucleus is, the more protons and neutrons can hold each other together via the nuclear force. But this is not the end of the story. There are several small effects we have to include here in order to provide a proper description of the nucleus. For instance, we have to consider that protons and neutrons at the surface of the nucleus don't really have a lot of interaction partners, which means they are not bound that tightly to the core. So for every particle on the surface, we actually have to reduce the binding energy since they don't contribute as much as we thought they would. In the first term, we assume that the size, that is the volume, is proportional to A, which in turn is proportional to the third power of the radius. The surface of a sphere is proportional to R squared. Therefore, this second term should be proportional to A to the power of two thirds. Notice the minus sign in front of this so-called surface term. Next, we have to consider that apart from the strong interaction, we also have electromagnetic interactions and that the protons repel each other. This is described via the Coulomb force, which goes charge times other charge divided by distance. So Z protons each feel Z minus one other protons. And if we assume their distance to be approximately the radius, we can also write this part in terms of A. Now we turn to experimental observations. If a nucleus has equally many protons as neutrons, the binding energy is higher than for asymmetric nuclei. The liquid drop model cannot explain this theoretically. In order to do so, we must go to the Fermi gas theory. So for now, we just include a term proportional to the difference of Z and N. We square it so that the sign does not matter. Whether it is one more proton or one more neutron doesn't matter. Finally, we divide by A, which reflects the observation that for larger nuclei, this effect becomes less and less important. This term is called asymmetry term, and the reason we have to include it is based on the Pauli exclusion principle. Finally, we have yet another experimental observation to include here. The nucleus holds together better if the number of protons and the number of neutrons are even numbers. This is due to spin coupling and can also not be explained in the liquid drop model. If either the proton number or the neutron number is odd, we do not have to adjust this formula. But for an odd-odd nucleus, the binding energy goes down again. That is, it is more weakly bound. Since this term comes from pairs of spins that couple together, this term is called pairing term. Now we're almost done. We still need to fix those constants. Since there are five constants, we need to fit this to experimentally measured binding energies of five different nuclei. This has been done and these are the approximate values. Notice however that the exact values here strongly depend on which five nuclei exactly we consider. Now that we have formula and numeric values, we can plot this equation for some values of Z and N. As you can see, this is the same shape as the table of nucleates. 
The curvature of both figures show that stable nuclei are usually those where we have more neutrons than protons. To summarize, we talked about the liquid drop model of the nucleus and came up with an equation to calculate the binding energy. Since we included both theoretical considerations as well as experimental observations, this formula is often called semi-empirical mass formula. Still, the liquid drop model cannot explain the nucleus completely. The asymmetry term can only be understood in terms of the Fermi gas model, and the pairing term, as well as the topic of magic numbers, can be explained by the nuclear shell model. But that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.